Imagine you're standing at the railway station in 2005. The coaches are old, the platforms are crowded, the engines smell of diesel, and glaze are almost guaranteed. Now jump to 2030, where a sleek white and blue train enters a station that looks more like an airport lounge than a railway platform. The journey from one version of Indian Railways to the other is nothing short of remarkable. Welcome to Periscope. In this two-part video, we are breaking down the quiet but enormous transformation of Indian Railways. This isn't simply modernization, it's a full redesign. And I'd suggest you stay till the end, because you will see that India isn't just catching up with global standards, it's building something unique of its own. For many years, railways represented everything outdated in India. Slow, inefficient, underfunded, and unable to keep up with rising demand. Yet over the last decade, almost every element of the system has undergone a radical shift. Trains, stations, tracks, signaling, safety, freight movement, and even the ticketing system. Everything is being rebuilt. The first and most visible sign of this change is the Vande Bharat. Vande Bharat is not just a modern train, it represents a different design philosophy. Traditional trains in India work on a loco hall system, where one locomotive pulls all the coaches. Vande Bharat is a train set, which means several coaches and paint their own motors. This gives it faster acceleration, smoother braking and a more stable ride. It's also lighter, more energy efficient and designed to operate at speeds up to 160 to 180 km per hour. Inside, the experience is far better than what most Indian passengers have been used to. The interiors are brighter, the seats are more comfortable, the doors are automatic and the coaches feel quieter. Even simple things like toilets, lighting and information displays have been redesigned from scratch. For the first time, Indian trains look and feel contemporary. Over time, variations of Vande Bharat have emerged. There are shorter versions for routes with fewer passengers, upcoming sleeper versions for overnight journeys, and a Vande Metro version for high-frequency regional travel. It's a family of trains built for different distances and passenger needs, which means the railway network can be optimized far more intelligently. Passenger trains get most of the public attention, but one of the biggest reforms is actually happening in freight. India now uses the WAG-12, the most powerful locomotive the country has ever had. Built through a partnership with Alstom, this engine is designed to pull extremely heavy loads at much higher speed. It works in sync with the dedicated freight corridors, special railway lines created solely for goods movement. These corridors are among the most important infrastructure projects in India today. By separating freight and passenger traffic, trains carrying goods no longer have to stop repeatedly to give way to express trains. This speeds up logistics, reduces costs for businesses, and frees up capacity on existing tracks for more passenger services. It also changes the entire rhythm of how freight moves across the country. There is a misconception that all improvements are aimed at premium travelers. But the introduction of Amrit Bharat trains shows how the focus is shifting to the majority of passengers, those who travel in general and sleeper class. These trains have redesigned interiors, keener fittings, better lighting, stronger couplers, and generally smoother rides. They still maintain affordability, but the experience feels far more modern. The idea is simple, comfort should not be a luxury reserved for premium classes. Equally important is what's happening at the station level. India is now redeveloping more than 1,300 stations under the Amrit Bharat station scheme. This includes major hubs in cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Jaipur, and hundreds of smaller stations across the country. The changes are visible the moment you step in. Platforms are being widened, concourses are being expanded, and movement inside stations is being reorganized. Facilities like lifts, escalators, waiting lounges, and food courts are being added. Parking areas, EV charging bays, and metro or bus integration points are also being built. It's not a cosmetic facelift. It's a complete rethinking of how passengers enter, exit, and use stations, especially during peak hours. Together, these changes in trains, freight movement, and station design 
are creating an ecosystem where rail travel becomes easier, cleaner and faster. We look at how new trains, freight engines and stations are reshaping the visible side of Indian railways. But the biggest changes are often the ones most passengers never see. The tracks under the train, the signalling systems controlling movement and the technologies ensuring safety. These form the backbone of the modern railway network. Without upgrading these, even the best trains cannot achieve their potential. So let's begin with safety because that is where one of India's most important innovations has emerged. For decades, India relied on a mixture of manual signals, basic alarms, and human supervision. While lakhs of passengers were transported safely, the system wasn't designed for high-speed operations or dense traffic. To address this, Indian Railways developed Kavaj, an automatic train protection system built entirely in India. Kavaj continuously monitors a train's speed, its distance to the next signal, and its proximity to other trains. If a train approaches a red signal too quickly or gets too close to another train ahead, Kavaj intervenes and applies the brakes automatically. It also works in low visibility, especially during fog. Systems like this are common in advanced railway networks around the world, but India has managed to develop its own version at a fraction of the global cost. As more routes get fitted with Kavaj, especially high-density corridors between major cities, trains will be able to run faster and with far more consistency. Vande Bharat trains are capable of reaching 160 to 180 km per hour, but their actual operating speed depends entirely on the quality of tracks beneath them. Over the last few years, India has been upgrading its busiest routes, including Delhi to Mumbai and Delhi to Howrah, to support speeds of 160 km per hour. This includes strengthening the tracks, improving curves, upgrading overhead electric lines, installing modern signalling systems, and fencing the routes to prevent trespassing. These changes may not look dramatic, but they are essential. A modern train set like Vande Bharat cannot deliver its full potential unless the supporting infrastructure is equally advanced. As these upgrades expand across the network, major routes will see travel times fall not by minutes, but by ours. While Vande Bharat represents a modern high-speed train, India is simultaneously working on something even more ambitious. The Mumbai Ahmedabad high-speed rail project is India's first true bullet train line, built using Japan's Shinkansen technology. Designed for speeds of around 320 km per hour, it aims to transform long-distance travel between major cities. Construction is progressing rapidly. Viaducts, bridges, and station structures are rising across Gujarat and Maharashtra. The project even includes India's first undersea railway tunnel near Mumbai. Once operational, travel time between Mumbai and Ahmedabad will drop to just a couple of hours. And the project will serve as a blueprint for future high-speed corridors. India's long-term plan includes several such routes, eventually forming a network of thousands of kilometers of high-speed rail. It will take time, but the direction is clear. India wants faster, cleaner, and more reliable long-distance rail travel. Another major transformation is the mere complete electrification of India's broad gauge network. In the last decade, the percentage of electrified lines has increased dramatically. Electric trains accelerate faster, cost less to operate, and reduce dependence on diesel, which is expensive and polluting. With the entire network running on electric traction, India can operate more trains with greater efficiency. It also simplifies future designs since rolling stock no longer needs to support both diesel and electric systems. Electrification also supports environmental goods. Indian Railways has begun experimenting with hydrogen-powered trains, which emit only water vapor. If this technology becomes cost-effective, it could play a major role in India's sustainability strategy. Even before Vande Bharat arrived, Indian Railways made a significant shift by moving away from older ICF coaches and adopting newer LHB coaches. These coaches are safer, stronger, and more stable at high speeds. They do not telescope during accidents, have better suspension, and can handle higher operational speeds. Most long-distance trains today already use LHB coaches, which means that overall safety and comfort have improved across the board. Not all improvements involve steel and concrete. A major digital transformation is changing how passengers interact with the railways. The UTS mobile app allows passengers to buy unreserved tickets directly on their phones and use QR codes to enter platforms and board trains, removing the need for long queues. A new unified app called RailOne is also being developed. It will combine reserved and unreserved bookings, live train tracking, PNR updates, food ordering, complaint systems, 
and a digital wallet, all in one interface. These improvements may seem small compared to new trains or new tracks, but they make everyday travel far more convenient for millions of people. When we put all of this together, the picture becomes clear. Indian Railways is undergoing one of the most comprehensive upgrades in its history. Trains are becoming faster and more comfortable. Stations are becoming cleaner and better designed. Safety systems are becoming smarter. Freight movement is becoming more efficient. Tracks and signaling are becoming high-speed capable. And the entire passenger experience is becoming digital. This is only the beginning. India moves millions of passengers and massive quantities of freight every single day. A transformation at this scale will have long-term benefits that touch every aspect of the country's economy. If this helped you understand how India's railway transformation is unfolding behind the scenes, consider subscribing to Periscope. Here, we break down India's biggest economic and infrastructure changes with clarity and depth. Before you go, let me ask you one thing. Which part of the railway transformation do you think will impact India the most? New trains, new safety systems or high-speed travel? Tell me in the comments.